Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell continues tomorrow at 9 on BBC One. Now with basketball, rowing and tennis, it's Saturday Sports Day here on BBC One. Hello there and welcome to the BBC Sports Centre. In today's show, we'll be meeting the basketball player moved to tears over her sports future. We'll hear from Britain's new tennis talent and the Olympic champion who will be going for gold again in Rio. I'm Katie Gordall and this is Saturday Sports Day. So all that to come, but first let's just take a quick look at some of today's other stories. Yorkshire coach Jason Gillespie says he's had two positive meetings with the ECB about the vacant head coach's job. England are currently playing New Zealand at Lords on day three of the first test. Glasgow are through to the Pro 12 final after a dramatic late win over Ulster. Later today, it's the semi-finals in the Aviva Premiership playoffs. And Sebastian Vettel has gone fastest in final practice ahead of the Monaco Grand Prix. Qualifying starts in around 10 minutes time and there's highlights on BBC One later. Britain's women's basketball team face extinction unless they perform well at next month's European Championship. That's the view of one of their players who broke down when she was asked about the future of the sport. Chris Mitchell went to meet the team in Worcester where emotions were running high. When they were kids, this is the sort of place they would have practiced, but now these four players play for the national team. The only trouble is for them is they're asking, where is everybody? Why isn't anybody taking any notice of them? In just a few weeks' time, these players will be trying to qualify for the Olympics. It's come very far, especially during, you know, 2012, during the Olympics, where we were able to put women's basketball on the map. This was a key moment at the London Games. Hopes of a win over France dashed in the final agonising seconds. The defeat ended Olympic hopes and effectively signalled the end of their UK sport funding. Despite some impressive performances since, the players believe their sport is close to collapse. I think our athletes have realised the importance of the situation we're in. Because they're key. We, we need our best athletes uh, on the court representing Great Britain. Showing that we, not only do we want the funding the profile, but we actually deserve it. There's no funding if we do not achieve top six. Bas women's basketball, basketball in general, will be extinct. So we are holding the flag high for women and men's basketball. That is some axe to hold over your yeah. head. You really believe the women's game is pretty much done for? Yeah, I think so. Sad, but true. Yeah. It is sad, isn't it? Yeah. Don't and pressure. Me cry. <laughs> well, I don't want to make you cry, yeah. but obviously it's interesting that you, you feel so passionately about it. Mm. You know, I wasn't <laughs> expecting that reaction from you. Yeah, I guess because oh, this is embarrassing, isn't it? It's not embarrassing <laughs> at all. Um, I guess because we put so much effort and hard work in, and it's quite disappointing that just because we didn't get a medal means that we're not worth anything, you know? And. I've worked so hard just throughout my career and it is, it's, I guess what made me really upset is realising if we don't achieve our goals, it will be burnt to the ground and uh, they will, I will never pay for my country again. Yeah, certainly a lot at stake for the players and all of those crucial women's matches will be shown across the BBC next month. And while they'll be focused on European success, so too will Britain's rowers. Next week, Poland hosts the European Rowing Championships and the four-time Olympic medalist Catherine Granger will be there. It's her first big race since winning gold at London 2012, as Andy Swiss reports. A new dawn for one of Britain's golden stars. Catherine Granger back in a boat and ready for her first major race since this. Olympic champion, Catherine Granger and Hannah Hawkins. 
London 2012 seemed the fairy tale finish, and for two years she weighed up whether to retire or return. Mentally, physically, emotionally, everything. I needed a break. I needed to make a decision also, because I there wasn't a lot of people assumed I would just retire there and then because I finally achieved what I wanted to. I took two full years agonizing most days about whether or not to come back and then decided to come back. And with a new partner, Vicky Thornley, she's hoping for that old magic. For now, Catherine Granger's focus is very much on the European Championships, but she does, of course, have a far bigger target in her sights. The dream which has really driven her comeback of one final chance at Olympic glory. Granger's journey from silvers at Sydney, Athens and most heartbreakingly Beijing to glory in London is already one of British sport's most remarkable stories. Now she's aiming for a fifth medal in Rio at the age of 40. I'm not doing it because it is this one song, but I will retire after Rio. It's not going to be a huge surprise to anyone. Um, and I think, I think it means that I, I kind of value every day. I really treasure every day and I feel very lucky to be able to do it again. But I certainly don't feel it's dulled. I still have the same passion, same drive, same competitive hunger, because I know this is, this is the last shot, really. The end, then, is in sight. But for Catherine Granger, this final chapter just might be her most extraordinary yet. Now, the French Open tennis starts tomorrow. There'll be five British players in the main draw, including Aliash Badene, who'll be representing his adopted country for the first time at a Grand Slam. Emily Croydon went to see him before he left for Paris. Andy Murray has brought great success to British tennis, but for a long time now, he's been alone in the world's top 100. Not anymore. Aliash Badene, the world number 77, recently became a British citizen. I love it here and uh, yeah, I love the mentality of the people. I know I can bring the best out of myself. Born in Slovenia, Badene began playing tennis with his twin brother. Before long, he started to take it seriously. It wasn't so tough to be the best in Slovenia because there were not so many players. I wasn't happy with the facilities, with the help I was getting from the Federation and I decided, OK, if I want to go step further, I need to move uh, to the UK. He came to train with a British coach in 2008, then in 2012 moved over permanently. At that stage, he started his application for a British passport. I need to give something back to the people, to the country, I always felt if I would have a GB flag next to my name, I would feel proud. Badene has become the British number two behind Murray, pushing players like James Ward and Kyle Edmund further down the British rankings. If I would be on their spot, I, I would felt quite motivated to go forward, to, to push myself even harder every practice, every match, and I think it can benefit all of us. His aim is to play for Great Britain in the Davis Cup, but as he's already represented Slovenia, that may not be straightforward. In January, the International Tennis Federation introduced a new ruling which states that a player cannot represent two different countries in the Davis Cup. But Dene is appealing on the grounds that his passport application was already underway when the law was brought in really don't want to push anyone from the team or that anyone feels threatened. I just want to earn my place. If I would be playing for Great Britain, I would give 100% every match and it's just a matter of, of when do I get the chance and show them. And we wish him all the best. Well, that's nearly all from us. Before we go, very quick update from Laws. New Zealand are 407 for four when rain stop play. That's a lead of 18. But this is the last in our current series of Saturday Sports. So really hope you've enjoyed the show and we see you again soon. Bye bye. A one-pound item wows the crowds next. It's a bargain hunt special from Edinburgh. Join us for a day of exciting FA Cup coverage on the BBC. Get carried away one last time. 
I'm going to meet home cooks all around Britain who are mad about their food. Just the one boy who loved to cook. This is my excuse to see what makes other cultures tick. You can share food with someone. You've made a friend for a life. This is about much more than food. Behind every mouthful is a personal story. The taste continues from one generation to the next. My journey will take me around the world. Beauty is, I won't even need a passport. Nine